seven weeks of cricket, 48 games, one ball, here's Bolt. They're going to push. Are we in for a super over? They've got to go quick. They've got to go quick. Out. I'm sure he's out. We're going to a super over. You are kidding me. You are kidding me. Unbelievable. It was a nervous place. Um, it was chaos at times because, you know, don't confuse a commentator that knows every single law and every single ruling. The statistician that sits there next to you becomes the most important person in that com box. What is a super over? What are the rules of the super over? What happens if the super over is tied? How do they decide this thing? There are various things being shouted at. Who's doing the presentation at the end on the far side of the ground? Are we changing now after 45 minutes of commentary and they go to a super over? Um, my, as I said earlier, uh, you know, the, the luckiest position I was in was between Ian Smith and Ian Bishop. So Bishop's called some great moments with the, you know, Carlos Brathwaite moment, etc. And Ian Smith has called some great moments. And Smithy absolutely nailed it. I know some of the England boys have gone up to Ian Smith. We were out in New Zealand recently. Johnny Bairstow was one of them and went up to Ian Smith and thanked him for the way he called that World Cup finals by the barest of margins uh, and said, you actually added, if that's possible, you added to our World Cup win, Smithy, because you called it so well. That's how great a moment and how much Ian Smith nailed that moment. 100 overs of cricket, you cannot split these teams. This is quite incredible. You cannot, I say it, I said it before, you cannot write a script like this. You cannot write a script like this. But also fair play to Bish. Three commentators, Bish could have easily jumped in. Some people think the bigger the moment, the more you have to talk. You know, Ian Bishop took a little bit of a backward stage, realised New Zealand, England, Ian Smith, Nasser Hussain, I realise Ian Smith is absolutely nailing this. Over to you, Smithy. And he called it perfectly. Two to win. Guttall's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's got to throw. It's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it. England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins. By the barest of all margins. Absolute ecstasy for England. Agony. Agony for New Zealand. Is it my favourite time of commentary? Well, it has to be right up there, doesn't it? Because it was perhaps one of the greatest games of cricket that we've ever seen or ever likely to see, particularly when you consider the importance of what was at stake and, and the stage that we were playing on. Um, and it was great to be out of there. And, and where it came from, I don't know. I had no idea it was, was going to turn out that way when I sat down with seven overs to go. Um, I had no idea that that last commentary stint that usually is around 30 to 35 minutes was, was going to last closer to 90. Uh, and, and it was, it was. I've always said this uh, about commentary. Commentary is not a competition. It's a combination. And when you work alongside people, you bring out the best in each other. We struck a good combination with Nasser Hussain and Ian Bishop. Nasser, of course, was such a passionate Englishman, but a true professional. Um, I, I'm a little bit less to that because I believe I'm a, I've been doing it a, quite a long time. So I believe I'm a cricket commentator from New Zealand, not a New Zealand cricket commentator. So I'm not there to fly the flag or wear the cheerleader's outfit. And Bish has always been one of those guys who you, you'd see, you could see Ian Bishop with a wig on in a court because he's just that balanced and that calm that he'd be the guy who can make the decision. So you can just see, can't you, uh, Judge Bishop? You can just see him there make, making making the most balanced, reserved. When all that's did and done, the most sensible words, <laughs> okay, they will come they'll come from Judge Bishop. But uh, So we found a balance, and it is. It's a combination that brings out the best in, in, in everybody. So we struck a combination, and we found a moment to bring out the best in ourselves, which is fantastic.
uh, just from the start of the day, really, Kate Williamson winning the toss and, and choosing uh, to bat first on a green lords pitch on, a, on what was a damp morning, brave decision uh, to see the match ebb and flow uh, in the balance of power. Um, and there was a, a colleague of us, who was, well, Brendan McCollum can't be left out of this conversation to see him marching up and down the back of the commentary boxes, nervous as a rabbit. Um, was phenomenal <laughs> to us, and NASA was having uh, no part of it. Actually, he was having great delight in it. Um, but but just seeing guys like like Jimmy Nisham uh, and knowing what he went through uh, in previous years, and to come back to have that side that type of moment in a final at Lords. Um, Trent Bolt not holding on legally to a catch that went down there. Slow ball. Now then. Now then. It's Trent Bolt again. Is this it? Is this it? Oh, he's thrown it. He's got it. He's got it. It's six. And then Ben Stokes. The redemption of Ben Stokes, given what happened in the World T20 final a couple of years before. And, and someone like Jafar Archer, for, for many issues of symbolism, um, there was a small compartment that doubted whether he could fit into the culture of England's team, which was a very, very good team coming into that World Cup. Well, I think he did it seamlessly, and now he's a World Cup champion. So having sat and really, as Nasser said, understood that this was the moment for himself and Smithy, I enjoy just listening to it and watching the drama unfold and, and really only trying to add anything, if at all I added anything. It was really listening and watching to those guys and the game and then that crowd. I don't know if a, an occasion like that could ever be repeated. The drama of that was the best World Cup final. I think, I don't think that's contestable. I thought there was another nice moment, actually, during the press or just before um, the ICC had a player of the tournament thing and the, the lady went up to Kane Williamson and said, you're player of the tournament. And Kane went, you could see him mouth it. Who, me? He's such a humble sort of, he was amazed that he was player of the tournament. And then he came up and the way he spoke with such dignity, he could have easily moaned about the five or six runs he could have moaned about the Super Over. A lot of things went against New Zealand that day. Let's be honest. There was a, England had a bit of luck that day. So Williamson could have mo moaned about that. Not once did he moan about it, uh, however much he was hurting inside. So I thought Kane Williamson was a massive winner that day. Look, it, it certainly wasn't uh, just one extra run. You know, there's so many small parts in that match that um, could have gone either way, as we saw uh, throughout that whole game. But congratulations to England. Um, they've had a fantastic campaign and they, they deserve the victory. When it really struck me was walking across the ground to do the prayers. They're usually at Lords at that time, everyone's getting up and you can hear seats go up and people leaving. Not a single person had left the ground. You know, English cricket have waited a long time for that moment. There wasn't someone who was just going to jump up and miss it. And then later on that evening, when everything was complete and you were walking down St. John's Wood High Street and you saw all the England fans with massive smiles on their faces, it suddenly hit you that, you know, this is what English cricket has needed um, and, and what was delivered by a, a, a fantastic group of cricketers led by a magnificent captain in Owen Morgan. ICC World Cup champions, England! Some of the footage that was put out um, by ICC and Sky on their social media channels afterwards, some of the replays, some of the shots that we hadn't actually seen, but from different angles, from the crowd, some of the social media stuff after that World Cup final was brilliant output. And again, I know the England boys absolutely loved it. They were craving for more of it, retweeting a lot more of it. I don't think as an England fan, you know, we've played it out so many times. As of yet, I've not heard many England fans say, oh no, not this World Cup final again. Um, they have all gone, yeah, great, the World Cup final's on again. And I guess on July, what was it? July the 14th, was it the date? Um, I, I guess we'll probably see it again somewhere.